of that word, and that word says the word of God is quick. It means all that. It means it's active, it's blessed, it's endless in the kingdom of God. Amen. So remember that. It's living water. Praise God. Uh, to be fresh, powerful. So the word of God is quick. So as we look at this scripture and we talk about discerning, it would be no better way to discern or to judge what's of God or what's not than the word of God. Because it's active, it's alive, it's living water, praise God, it's endless. So the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than a double-edged sword. Than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and the joints and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Just think if you if you use the word of God to discern when you got these uh these these people calling you on your phone trying to sell you stuff. <laughs> Amen. You you know, a lot of times we automatically hang the phone up because we know that there's a scam going on most of the time. But guess what? What if God will tell you this ain't a scam? By the word of God, this person calls you and before you know it, this could be something that could be helpful for the kingdom of God. We need to begin to discern based on the fact is could this be helpful to the kingdom of God and me personally or could it not be? And if it's not kingdom, then we're not happy, right? Amen. So discerning the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 21. So discernment comes from the word of God. Remember that. You can write that down. Discernment is from the word of God. The Bible says, my son, let not them depart from thy eyes. I'm going to start in verse 20. Proverbs 3, verse 20. And by his knowledge, the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way. I'm reading from this uh, version. And your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sleep. You got the word of God. And when you use it and you're discerning by the word of God, amen, your sleep is sweet. Because you know you chose God's way. And see, sometimes, and most of the time, how I many know God's ways is not man's ways? Amen. So, but you know, you can still go to sleep. You said something that was totally con contracting or, or counter to what the world say, and you still got sweet sleep. That's when you know you start to trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. When you go the same way everybody else is going, now it says, I tell you, you going the wrong way. Amen. You need to be going a different way. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor the trouble for the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Amen. That's where we are, are discerning from the word of God. But we're going to look at deception. Because when we're not discerning, when we're not using the word of God, when we're not letting the word of God pierce and, and go down into the soul and the spirit and the joints and the mirror and allow the word of God to be a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, somebody can come and sound good but not be good and sound. Now, how can you sound good and not be good and sound? You can sound good. You can be using a couple of scriptures, but you're using them out of context. And out of context. Amen. So now you're using them to make them sound good just to get you because they know that you are a Christian and you like hearing the word of God. But guess what? It's all out of context. Praise God. So you got to say, wait a minute. I need a little bit more than just one scripture to ride on. It should be another scripture that goes with that scripture to couple with it to bring that whole point. To a head. Amen? Amen. So we got to discern through the word of God. So somebody said run everything through the word. Amen. Amen. You got decisions to make about your children. You got decisions to make about your relationship. You got decisions to make about your career. I always teach the kids the three most important decisions. First, who you going to serve? God or the devil? Second decision is what is your career choice? And third is your life partner. Amen. Because a lot of times the career choice comes before the life partner. I used to teach the other way. Your life partner and then your career choice. But now because sometimes you get out of college, you're not married yet, you got a career choice. Amen. Then you got a life mate. Those three choices are powerful choices that you have to make in your life. Amen. Because you can choose a career 
that take you away from home and destroy your marriage. Amen? You can choose a, a person in your life that's not open to the call of God on your life. Amen? And now it's messed up because you don't want to leave because she don't, she's jealous because of her past relationship. Amen? Amen? But the Word of God will help you in all these decisions that we have to make. If not, if there's not discernment, if discernment is not high in the operating in the Holy Spirit in your life, you are a proud candidate for deception. Being deceived by others. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 and 5 says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you, that no many shall come in my name. A lot of people, the church, many shall come in my name, saying I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Jesus said it's going to happen, so guess what? It's going to happen. Amen. 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 Many of them are going to deceive many. Jesus said it, it's going to happen, and it's happening right now. Proverbs 12 and 5 says, The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsel of the wicked is deceit. The counsel of the wicked is deceit. Who are you getting counseling from these days? Who counseling you in areas that are highly concerned? Areas of your children. Who's counseling you? Well, the Word of God should be your counselor. Amen. You should go to the Word of God and let it be the determining factor for every decision that you make in your life, whether it be personal, whether it be private, whether it be social, whether it be career-wise, the Word of God should be making this sin. I have to be, I have to acknowledge, you have to acknowledge. How often do you say, wait a minute, stop, let me check with the Word of God and see. But David said, that word if I what? Hid it in my heart, that I might not sin against it. There's no way you should be in a marriage if you have not covered several scriptures in the Bible concerning marriage. Praise God, because if so, you don't think it's necessary to have God's opinion in that area. Amen. If you have a business, but you haven't went in the Bible and searched the scriptures as it pertains to business, don't come into cahoots with the world. You can't be a business partner with people of the world. Amen. Amen. Because they're doing their business for a different reason than you're doing your business. Yeah. That's right. Amen. 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 Praise God. You can't have friends Amen. that don't believe like you believe. You are trying to win them over. You're finding yourself friendly to them. Praise God, but your ultimate goal for them is that you get these people saved. Amen. Amen. So you are you are you are you are an acquaintance with these people. You know, your brother, but you want them to ultimately make them a brother and sister in Christ. Amen. 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 The counsel of the wicked is deceit. Uh, Matthew 24 and 24. For they shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs. And wonders. Amen. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of magician stuff going on. The Illuminati. Different stuff like that. They go to concerts and different things like that. These people are actually seeing things that aren't even really there. Satan is using a lot of these concerts. He's using a lot of this, this demonic activity to get these kids drawn in. There's always a subliminal message behind the message. Amen. Amen. Deception is high on the rise right now. And people taking their life until somebody came up dead. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Satan coming after your life. False prophets should show great signs and wonders. Everybody want to be great. Everybody's attracted to passion. And the people of the world are 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 are, are passionate about singing, about killing, about girls are 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 are, are, are hoes and, and 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 gambling and selling dope and going to prison. It's a badge of honor now. We making that stuff. That stuff is crazy. It's deception, man, but it's being perpetuated as if it's something good because they go back and do a turkey giveaway doing Thanksgiving. Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil is a liar. They destroy people's life with the music. Yeah. If I'm a Christian, praise God, I have to ask myself, even as early as this morning, why have I turned and started listening to some different type of music? Mm -hmm. This morning, what has happened? Have I been at that? Has something influenced me in some kind of way to listen to different type of music? Amen. Praise God. I'm going to talk about me, not about you. Listen to what you want to listen to. But the Bible said we need to have sing songs and hymns that remind us of how good God has been to us and what he expects out of us. Because we're coming to the end. I don't care what nobody says. We are at the end. We are at the end. The Bible said we are closer than when we first, begin, when we first believed. Vance Abner says Satan has a false gospel. He has a false repentance. He has a false dedication, he has a false faith, he has a false everything. We Christians 
not well read in the scriptures will easily fall prey to the modern magicians. Modern magicians, there's modern magicians right now out there, amen. And sometimes we think we can walk in that society and not be affected by it. Amen. You become a product of your environment at some point. Amen. You know, um, we think that we can't be tainted. I tell the kids all the time next day, you are what you eat. Your environment, surroundings that surround you that affect your behavior and your attitude. And then A stands for atmosphere. That's the air you breathe in from the environment that you're placed in. And then T stands for trainer. You are your environment, your atmosphere, and your trainer who's training you. Amen. Most people think I got it already. Man, I was crying out for the longest to Elder Graham came into my life, you know, for a, a mentor, somebody that I can talk to and I don't have to be worried about telling everything. And trust me, everything. And he's a man of God to be able to skillfully be able to say, this can be put back in place this way, this right here. Some that can be cut off this way. Praise God. His wife just died. So, so the lady, my, my, his mother-in-law just died um, last week. Praise God. So Elder Graham, just pray for him. Just lift his name up. Elder Graham, he was married 52 years. Amen. He said he never knew another woman. And she never knew another man. Bless him. Amen. Bless him. Praise God. Amen. So we don't want to fall afraid to these modern magicians. Romans chapter 16, verse 18. We're still talking about being deceived by others. For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own bellies. And by good words, and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Anybody ever heard good good speeches? Amen. And 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 fair speeches and deceive the hearts of others with good words. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse thirty-three: "Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good matters." There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about deceiving and being deceived. That means that people actually are getting up. And they are deceiving on purpose. And they're deceiving for what it may bring them. There's nothing popular in Michigan City about being a preacher. Promise you. There's nothing popular around here because we, we get talked about sometimes as we should. Amen. So there's nothing popular about it. So try to stand up and deceive something for recognition. Amen. Or to sound great so people can stand up and jump around. When I know... Just nine months ago, I was on my deathbed and could have died. And I could have died and then my soul weighed in the balance. And what is God going to say about me? Where am I going? Going to heaven or going to hell? It changed my whole perspective. Amen. Amen. It should change our perspective as well. Amen. That really, none of this stuff matters. Yeah. Only what we do for Christ is going to last. And at the end of the day, were we really saved? Or were we not saved? Amen. 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 And saved people just don't go around <coughs> deceiving people. Amen. Amen. So the word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminates, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. So we don't want to be deceived by others. But let's go to that scripture. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. So fornicator talks about being a homeowner. Uh, a male prostitute, a man who prostitutes his body to another lust for hire, a male prostitute, a man who indulges in unlawful sinful intercourse, a fornicator. So we, we're looking at these words, but God says these people, we can't get in if this the, the, the practices that we're practicing. Fornicators, or we can't inherit. Idolaters, amen, a worshiper of a false god. Um, use anyone, even Christians, Participate in any way in worship of the heathen. Amen. He cut this man as a worshiper of, of, of man. He, he served money. So we're talking about fornicate. We're talking about uh, adultery. We're talking about adulterous. An adulterer. Uh, one who is faithless towards God. Ungodly. See, we always thought that an adulterous was just being 
cheating on your husband, your wife. But an adulteress is a somebody who's faithless towards God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In the act of being unfaithful. Praise God. And then we got uh, infeminate. That means figuratively soft. It means soft. Soft to the touch in a bad sense. Um, soft to the touch in a bad sense. Um, of a boy kept for homosexuality relations with a man. Of a man who submits his body in unnatural lewdness. Amen. So that's that, that, what that word means. Praise God. And abuses of himself. People that abuse himself. Amen. One who lies with a male as with a female. Uh, a sodomite. Homosexual. Amen. Abuses of himself. God said, those people, know ye not that all unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This man was preaching out in the street. And he said, how you know that I can't go to heaven like that? How you know? You ain't, you ain't nobody. You ain't God. He said, no, I'm not God. But God said it. <laughs> Bobby Bopper. He just said, hey, because the word of God says so. He said, I ain't saying this stuff. I don't even want this job. He said, I don't choose this job to go around and tell people what thus says the Lord. But he answered the call of God. How do you know that I would die if I wouldn't answer that call? That's what he said, Marty Bakken. You're a powerful guy. He said, because the Bible says so. Amen. He's willing enough to stand up and, and say what God said. Amen. So let's look at self-deception a little bit. We talked about other people deceiving us. Look at self-deception. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Let man, no man deceive himself. Boy, that's, that's crazy. You think you ever deceive yourself? Or really? You ever deceive yourself? Oh, you trick myself? You ever use Sister Kelly to trick yourself? Sister Bill, you ever trick yourself anymore? Amen. Praise God. Deceive. Deceive. Didn't even know. Brother, hey, you think you deceive yourself? I, I didn't know I was doing. No, you were doing. So we got one. You might not have known. You got one to know. Amen. But praise pretty much we all have deceived ourselves, right? Praise Let God. no man deceive himself. If any man among you Seemeth to be wise in this world. If you think you got this thing all together, man, let it become a fool that he may be wise. No, I don't know nothing. Amen. I know a little bit of something. I'm still searching. I'm still seeking. Amen. But praise God. Let it become a fool to the world, to the wisdom of this world. Let it become a fool to the wisdom of this world. Because the foolishness of this world, amen, is wisdom of God. Amen. The foolishness of God is wisdom. Is, is wisdom. Praise God. The foolishness of man is wisdom of God. Amen. So, where was I at? When, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. For when a man thinketh he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. That's Galatians chapter 6, verse 3. That's Galatians chapter 6, verse 3. For if a man think of himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. I mean, when you operate in that pride, when a man thinks he's something, and when he's nothing, he's deceiving himself. James 1 and 22 says this, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own word. A lot of times I can say what God said, but I don't do what God said. If that's the case, I'm deceiving myself. Man, that Bible, I don't know what that Bible says. I know the Bible says, the Bible says, love no neighbor and yourself, but you can't, you can't love nothing. Or nobody. Amen. Talking about everybody. Gossip about everybody. But I know the Bible said I need to love my neighbor and myself. I know the Bible told me to study be quiet and mind my own business. I know the Bible told me he hates one that's swift to go on and start mischief. I hate, you know, you go to Proverbs he'll tell you the things that God hates. A lion tell him, one who goes to mischief real quick. Love fights. Love to go to him interrogate folks and love to get in the mess. Amen. A lying tongue. A proud look. He said he hate those things. And we always say God hate the voice. Yeah, he hates a proud look. He hates a liar. He hates those that think they're better than other people. He hates gossiping tongue. Francis him that shed innocent blood. Amen. Huh? Francis him him that spread the seed of discord. You didn't even, well, you wasn't even there, but you got an information on it. You went and started the whole conversation about these people alive and you wasn't even there. You're a platter of discord. You like to spread the seed of discord. Yeah. Amen. You wasn't there. You touch it. You should not tell it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But talking about deception. 
This is the stuff that everyday life, and I told the people earlier that God spoke to me that we were in a season of change. Uh, and maybe you're just speaking that to me, and I took that face value, but I'm sharing it with you as we are in a season of change, and as we're going through some changes because God is changing some things in our life, and He just flat out have to be changed. We need to be better. It need to be totally changed. Any man that be in Christ is a new creature. That speaks of change. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Just a flat out change. I can't do it no more. Amen. I can't go there no more because when I go there, I do watch this. It ain't that you go there and you just a total flop and do what you're doing. But how does it look, make our testimony look? Because we are the children of God. So we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. I listened to Fred Price last night. Man, he was on some serious stuff last night. See, the world's so dark is because the church ain't lit up. Amen. The church not lit up. Ain't no season in this world. Ain't no love in this world because the church so dull and have lost this season. Amen. I listened to him until I fell asleep. I just listened to what he was talking about. A lot of the pictures that need to go for. A lot of bad things that were done. Different races, different people got treated. Slavery, praise God. All this stuff was done right through the book. We used the book to do a lot of this stuff. Amen. Yeah. Stuff gonna be paid for at the end, man. Praise God. God told me start saying, listen, Ryan, you better get straight. Because what I'm getting ready to have you say pertains to you too. And you didn't tell everybody we need to get ourselves in order because I'm coming back real swiftly. Amen. He's coming back. Amen. So you don't worry about what I did yesterday, you worry about what you did this morning. From this place on and from this time on, I'm not going to be getting deceived by other people because I'm going to be in the Word of God. I'm not going to deceive myself because I'm in the Word of God. I'm not going to be deceived from the devil because I'm in the Word of God. Because anytime you get deceived, that can set you back five years. Okay. Get deceived on a car you shouldn't buy. See on a car you shouldn't buy just because of how it looks on the outside. Amen. But you didn't you didn't listen to the visible voice of God to tell you that you're entering into debt right now. Amen. Yeah. Praise God, man. This, this is real stuff, y'all. It's real. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mine. This is scripture I think, man. We everybody need to have this. We ain't gonna never get away. Be not deceived, God is not mine. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. I can feel I reaped a lot of stuff in my life from decisions I made. And they're constant. David lost a child because of sin with but see. Yeah. Gotta do it. Amen. We can lose greatly. Amen. Some great things that you don't know. Because watch this. We could do a thing and it didn't pass for 10 years. God, we can make a choice. But we're not in charge of the consequences. God is, and we're not in charge when the consequences come. I said, we do somebody wrong, and we get a flat tire tomorrow, right? Oh, boy, God ain't going to me. Now, you can destroy somebody's reputation, but you got a flat tire. You think that that, that is your punishment? No, what you did to them is the same thing going to happen to you. Amen. Amen. Same way, man. But God has the time on her when he's going to do it. So it's some stuff we did, stuff we said, we need to repent today. Forgive me, God. All that stuff I said about him or her, all that stuff I did to him or her, and did nobody know what me and you were the person that I did it to. Amen. And please have mercy on me. Amen. Please hold back what I deserve and give me some grace. Please give me what I've done. Amen. 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 Praise God. Vance Adams said, there's one thing worse than not coming to church, and that is to come and to do nothing about the message one hears. James tells us that hearing without doing means self-deception. That's self-deception. Amen. Hearing without doing. Deceived by darkness. Revelation chapter 12 by verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Who? Deceiveth the whole world. For me to walk around and feel like I ain't got deceived, I ain't going to do it. Because I knew I didn't got deceived. Praise God, because anytime you stop and say, I got it from here, God, deception starts right here. Mm. <laughs> anytime you stop, pull over and say, I got it right here. Go, I got it, man. You get out of here. <laughs> I got it, man. Your deception is right there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, so, which deceiving the whole world, 
He is cast out of the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. You remember that in Isaiah chapter, back in, back in uh, chapter 14, you remember Satan got kicked out because he said he wanted to be like God, he was going to be above him. Let's look at Revelation 13 and 14. And deceived them that dwell on the earth <clears throat> by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, said to them that dwell in the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword, by a sword and did live. Had a wound by the sword and then live. Got, got cut by the sword and then live. Talking about being deceived by darkness. Talking about being deceived by darkness. Revelation 10, I mean 20 and 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire of brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are. Man, the beast and the false, I don't want to be there anymore. And the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. And I don't want to be a false prophet, man. We don't want to be false Christians. We don't want to be people, man, that's tormented day and night, forever and ever. So what's the strategies of the devil? You know, we talked about you can be deceived by others. You can be deceived by yourself. You can be deceived by darkness. So what are some of the strategies? And we're going we're gonna to talk this last half hour on some of the strategies of the devil. Write them down. Strategy, that strategy number one. Satan's most infamous strategy is lying. His go-to. Satan's go-to is lying. Amen. I mean, if you tell one lie, you got to tell another lie to get out the other lie. Amen. Tell, don't tell the truth. Don't give my word. Amen. So, the Bible says in John 8 and 14, talking about his infamous strategy, his lying. He was a murderer from the beginning <clears throat> and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. There ain't no truth in him in Satan that is. Imagine now there's no truth in this person that's coming to see you. Now he may look to be truthful, may speak as if he's truthful, but there's no truth in him. So whatever's in garbage in, garbage out, get going. Whatever's inside the well is going to come out in the butt. Amen. So eventually, sometimes we need to listen a little bit more. That's what I just heard the Spirit tell me. Because we want to always take the lead and we want to always be the one talking. How can I know if he's using deception if I don't know what's coming out of him? Amen. Or what's coming out of her. Amen. Number two, Satan seeks to steal, kill, and destroy anybody that will let him. Anybody. Well, see, you might say, just, just after me, he ain't after nobody else. No, anybody that let him steal, kill, and destroy, John 10 and 10. The thief coming not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. First Peter 5 and 8, same scripture, right there with that. Satan seeks to steal, kill, and destroy anybody that will let him. That's number two. Another scripture goes with that First Peter 5 may be so but be vigilant because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So the devil as a roaring lion walketh about. You see the devil with pitchforks walking around you lately? You seen him working with real? You seen him in heaven? You seen by you have you seen an actual devil? How we portray a devil. Mm -hmm. Who the devil look like? Pastor. Who the devil look like? Praise the devil. The devil look like the Sunday school teacher and the children. The angel. The angel of life. The Bible says if Satan can describe himself as an angel of life, you know he can describe himself as a preacher. Nothing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. He can easily. Because we talked about it. It's in us. Which you have a spirit in you. The Bible says if you have not the spirit of God, you're not in his. It don't matter what this, this outside look like. Right. Outside can be messed up. You can have a made up mind. And the outside made some mistakes. Praise God, but God turned the mistakes to a mess. Right. I promise you he will. <laughs> Amen. But outside, that could be a mess. But God turned that mess into a message. Praise God. Once I get this inside corrected and line it up right. with what God has said, I need to be renewed in my mind. That's how I don't get deceived. I need to be renewed in my mind to marriage. I need to be renewed in my mind to relationship. I need to be renewed in my mind to my finances. I need to be renewed in my mind in the stewardship. Be renewed in my mind in the how to love and what's love and what's lust. Amen. 
This Bible breaks it all down. And it gives us to it. It's only our desire and will to submit to it. Because if not, Satan is always walking around. It don't say that he walked around for in the morning only, in the evening only. Satan continuously goes around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That means chew you up and spit you out. And you're going to be caught by two people. The problem is, Satan is walking around more than Christians walking around. You can either be caught by the devil or you're caught by the children of God who's out there witnessing. Guess what? It's more Satan walking around here than it is people of God. Amen. Because he's embodied in people. And just like the Spirit of Christ is embodied in us. Number three, Satan is the inventor of sin. And he's constantly tempting mankind to sin against God. Constantly tempting man to sin against God. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. What does that look like? Not only did he destroy the works of the devil, he wanted to get in you and destroy the works of the devil that are coming against you. He wanted to get in me and destroy the works of the devil that's coming against me. That way, when we say that Jesus is all-powerful, we can also be showing that Jesus is all-powerful. Breaking habits, addictions, hang-ups, hang-outs. Amen. He, he, he can do that for us. Mm. Number four, Satan tries to steal and choke the word of God out of the heart of man. Satan wants to choke the word out of you. Amen. If he can get his hands on that neck, he wants to choke that word out of you. Praise God. And he wants to get it out of your heart. Why does Satan want to get it out of your heart, Marie? Why does Satan want to get the word out of your heart? Because he knows the word that God has for us and we say it. We're not going to be talking about him. We're going to be able to cast him out and things like that. He does it before he gets in there. Amen. We get it, if we get it before he gets to that heart, he wants to snatch it out of the heart. Why do you think he want to take it out of our heart, Brother Shay? Because right, once it gets, once it gets uh, down into our heart, the action going to follow from that. Amen. So people so, snatch it before it get down there. Right. He got us. So how do we prevent him from choking? What the Bible say? Guard your what? Guard your what? Guard your what? Guard your what? Out of it. So the issues of life. So the issues of life come out of the heart. The problem is the word never gets to the heart. That's why it never gets to the feet. See, the word sometimes get choked at the neck. Right here at the neck. Yeah. Think about it. Right. Get in the head going down say choke it here. And don't get here because you know this and this ever line up here. He got this down here going to where this city's supposed to go because it's been said yes, okay, amen, and here. Yeah. And that'll come out of the issues of life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's powerful, you know. A lot of times, you know, they said it's 11 inches between heaven and hell. It's between your mouth and your heart. It's about 11 inches. You confess with your mouth and believe it in your heart. You confess with your mouth and not believe it in your Heart. Amen. Not, not be saved. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Mm. So, our heart and our mind have to be lined up. Make sure you know that. Make sure we know that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us, Lord God, that our mind and our heart have to be lined up. I'm going to do it, not because I have to. I'm going to do it because I've read it and I've said yes to what it said. And I'm sitting humbly submitting to what it said. And then I'll see God, even in the midst, praise God, of all the consequences, in the midst of uh, what it may look like, still obey God and leave the consequences to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So he says in Matthew 13, 22, And also he perceiveth them among thorns, is he that heareth the word, and the cares of this world, the stuff that he caring about in this world, Amen. It could be our choice. It could be it could be a car. It could be a job. It can be the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Man, the cares of this world. Is there anything that you care more about than you care about the word of God or about God? The deceitfulness of riches, because riches are deceitful. Amen. They choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Mm. First John chapter 2.16 For all that is in the world is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
is not of the Father, but of the world. Amen. All this stuff is not of the Father, but of the world. Luke chapter 8, verse 12. Those by the wayside are those that hear. Then the devil cometh and taketh away the word out of his heart. Least he should believe and be saved. Now that word saved right there don't only mean I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. That word is sozo. Amen. Be saved means if, see, 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 the devil cometh, because not only the devil, see, we, I, I, I really don't like how we preach the salvation thing, man. And, and it's really good because Jesus says, don't get caught up in the fact that you're working miracles and Satan is coming out. You know, rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. But also, I need to claim the fact that I'm delivered, I'm healed, prosperous, amen, and, and I'm free from eternal damnation. Those are all four words included in his word sozo, in his word salvation. Amen. So healed, first of all, I'm healed from this sin sickness. See, first of all, I'm healed. That, that's a sickness. That's a terminally ill disease. Because any man that don't know Christ is a man on death row with AIDS. That's his condition. He has an uncurable disease, and he just waited to die. Amen. That, that, that's a man in the world that's not saved. It's, it's a man on death row in the United States with AIDS. Amen. He has a term to heal disease, a disease that it cannot be cured, and sin sickness cannot be cured. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, God has put this void inside a man's heart, and the only thing that can fill that void is Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So, so it's Jesus. And, and, and what if, what if, I was asking a kid the other day, what if you were wrong? And you were, what if you thought salvation only meant coming to church and doing a couple good deeds? What if you thought, because you don't talk about nobody because you don't do this. What if you thought and you learned wrong and you found out that you really do need to witness and share your faith and really do need to love your neighbor as yourself and you really do need to forgive everybody and you really do shouldn't have nothing evil to say about anybody and you really do have to have this, this what if that's true? Would you be willing to say, I obey that? Or would you still stay stuck in your old ways? What if God told us the way we've been taught salvation is totally wrong? No, you ain't going to heaven doing that, Ronnie. No, you're not, Ronnie. I'm saying my name. No, no, no. I don't care how much you preach. I don't care how many hands you lay off. That right there is going to send you to hell. Ronnie, would you be willing to change? Amen. Shay, would you be willing to change if you knew? That there was something that God said he required of you, but you didn't think you needed to do it. Amen. Amen. With you. That word saved, y'all. Let's take it. The devil says, if you believe it, now watch this. The wayside that comes, the devil coming, and he takes away the word. This let you know everything rises and falls in the kingdom with the word. If it ain't the word, I don't care how sweet it looks and how cute it looks. If the word is said, it's not God. And it might work. But the devil got a lot of power down here too. He'll help you pull off something. But ain't nothing but a magician trick. So he can say he know and she know that that wasn't purely coming from God. She knows that it wasn't purely coming from God. But she did it because she wanted recognition. Well that's powerful y'all. It's powerful right there man. It's powerful right there what God just said to me man. Thank you Holy Ghost. Now, you know good and well that your motives behind for doing it was not that Jesus is magnified. Because everything you said after you got the accolades had nothing to do with him. Yes, you said thank you, God. But then after you got that trophy, you went out and you walked out. Look how that guy is. No, it's all the spirit of, of, of humility, y'all. Um. Amen. Satan come to get that word. Because if you believe that word according to scripture and take it away the word out of their hearts, least they should believe and be saved. One word didn't even get to the heart. The next word got to the heart. But then he stole the word out of the heart. Man, good stuff here, man. Thank you, Father. He don't want you delivered. He don't want you healed. He don't want you to be prosperous. He don't want you to have eternal life. Amen. He wants to narrow and dub down our revelation of the word so so. That's what he want. I'm just saying we're going to heaven anyhow. Be down here broke, be down here sick, be down here with nothing good going for ourselves. 
but I'm going to heaven anyhow. But then we can't attach salvation to money and having stuff either. You blessed. How blessed am I? Praise God. If I'm using the money that God has given me and I'm, I'm putting it in holes with pockets in it, I'm out here serving the world. I'm out here serving Satan and serving his kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Everywhere we invest that, because you got to spend something, you got to save something, you got to give something. Amen. But if you're giving more to a world system than you're giving to the kingdom, something's wrong. Amen. And I mean, when you give to your cousins, your nieces, brothers, that's giving to the kingdom. That's giving to people. Praise God to help them. Praise God, let's get this construed now. But the truth of the matter is, where is all of our resources that we're getting from heaven? Where are they going? Amen. If, if, if they're going other places, then the word thing that's took out of our heart. And now we can't be saved in a certain name. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you thought that God thought differently from the whole group of peers that was in the lunchroom, why didn't you say so? Why didn't you say so? You know God think different about that. Why didn't you say so? God loved everybody. Yes, honey, he do love everybody. But he hate the sin about everybody too. Amen. So so then I love the gospel, you know why? Because it put us all on our doggone belly, man. It put all of us on our knees, crying out, help me. Because the minute you think you got it all right, if you are studying God's word truly, the minute you think you got it all together, he's going to show you ten things you got wrong. Hey, hey, Alan said, God, how come I don't have the money? And they thought, hey, Alan was a, was a, was a spiritual man, love the Lord. Lord, how come I can't cast out devil? If your word said that I should be able to cast out devil. So God told him to shut down. And get in the closet, lock the door. He got to go and lock the door. He said, it was if God wrote 21 things down. It would keep 21 things. I ain't thought he was fast and loved his wife, never killed his wife, this, that. He thought, 21 things. 21 things. That he never would have even thought of. God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not thoughts. Only reason I'm saying this is God is saying all this to all of us. Doesn't let us get the spiritual big head. Amen. Because that's deception. That's self-deception. And Satan gets us like that because he gets the word out of our heart. When the word is in our heart, it's practiced continuously. If it's in our heart, it's practiced continuously. Then we see the fruit of it. Amen. So Satan will try to put evil, vow, crazy, doubtful, and fearful thoughts into your mind. Write that down. It's number five. What he put in your mind? Satan put doubtful, crazy, vile, evil thoughts into your mind. Satan will put vile, crazy, doubtful, fearful thoughts in your mind. One more time. Satan will put vile, evil, crazy, doubtful, and fearful thoughts in your mind. How many times have you been sitting up having a great day and get the craziest thoughts you ever had in your mind? What? Then you know what some of us say? Mm. God just showed me something. <laughs> God just showed me something. Did God show you that? Could it bring him glory? Or if he told you something, praise God. Are you willing to go share? Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. Cast it down imaginations. I want to see what that word imagination means in There's a Bible called the Touch Bible. It's a Touch Bible. You can download it. It's a free one there. One like for one ninety nine. Get that one. But when you read these words in the Bible, um, you can go to that specific word and you can press on it and it tell you what's the root word of that. They call it, they call it the Touch Bible. Imagination. Casting out imagination. Thoughts. Reckoning. Or reasoning. Such as is hostile to the Christian faith. So these imaginations are hostile to the Christian faith. Wow. You got to cast down these thoughts, Sister Maria, that's hostile to the Christian faith. 
a judgment, a decision, <coughs> such as a concise, uh, uh, a conscious passes. So remember that it's reasoning, conscious, conceit, imagination. So casting down any thought that is hostile to the Christian faith. Man, how many times do we marry a thought? How many times do we embrace that thought and think that thought and wonder, why come I can't quit thinking this? Because you didn't cast it down. Cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I know it may be true. Yeah, he did it. She hurt you. Yeah, but if you keep that thought, that thought, God ain't keep reminding you of what that person did to you. God is reminding you what Christ did for you. Amen. That's how you cast that thought down. He reminding you, Brother Aaron, of what happened. God, that the devil is the accuser of the brother. That's how you can find out if you're mature in the faith. If you're mature in the faith, you'll find out that God is talking to you more then Satan has because Satan said, I can't get through this joker. Every time I try to give him a vow or crazy or evil or doubtful thought, he starts telling me how good God is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she started praising the Lord. Now you've been driving crazy now, but he ain't going to stop. He's going to keep walking around as a ruined lion, seeking whom he may devour. But every time you hear a negative word, start saying, Hallelujah. Well, watch this. Do this on your job. Next time somebody comes to you and say, Man, did you hear about Raymond? Say, boy, I bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me, I'm going bless his holy name. <laughs> man, I'm serious. They say, Raymond, did you ain't see him yesterday? Man, I'm telling you, man. Man, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm so thankful to be happy, I don't know what to do. I guarantee you they won't come back with that job. <laughs> I guarantee you, man, try it. Let's, let's, let's tell the Lord, Lord, I promise. Lord, I'm going to try it. Try it, though. Some people are even scared to try it. Because the Bible says we're more loyal to man than we are to God. Love the praises of man more than the praises of God. Won't everybody say, man, Sister Kelly, she's a good person. She's so nice and she's so sweet. Soon as they say that, say, no, I ain't all that sweet. There's some areas in my life, honey, that ain't all that sweet. Whoo, that's, that's Christian right there. That's, that's real. That's hard. That starts Christian stuff right there. You hear that, Aaron? Aaron, you humble. I tell Aaron all the time, you know, He said, oh, no, man, it's just, it's just Christ in me. That ain't me. A lot of people like those bats on the back. I'll tell you why, in my job, all the men love pats on the back, and I realize because they're not getting any pats at home. Amen. There's certain reasons people want affirmation, because they're not getting affirmation from places they think they should get it from. So they come to work and they cut throat, they do stuff to everybody at the job, so that people can pat them on their back. So you get false accolades, because you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. Our motives and intentions are so great. It's so great, man. Man, when the intentions are of God, the blessings of God flow straight through. When the intent is God's, God's expected arrival, when the intent is God's blessing and His healing, when that's the intent, ooh, it comes straight through and flows straight through. Amen. But if we mix it up with our soul, our will, our mind, our emotions in there, it's clogging up the blessings of God. And God said, if I get it to you, he said, if I get it to you, I get it through you. If I get it through you, I get it to you. If you're ready to release what I'm getting ready to give you to everybody, then I'll give it to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So cast down the imagination. We got to cast it down. Hell, I heard this. Well, I heard this. I heard God going to use that sister. How did you hear that when she's so messed up? Because God said, in his word, I'm going to do a new thing in Maria. And even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it because you stay talking about it like this. Even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. When the Christians start acting like that, the world won't want to be a part of us. But I'm going to tell you, the Christian is just anti-brother and sister as the world is. Yeah? Because we didn't learn three scriptures. We can pray a little bit past five minutes. And, and can't nobody tell us nothing. We didn't arrive, right? Amen. No, man. Stay on our knees before the Lord. Yeah. We don't want people to deceive us. We don't want darkness deceiving us. We don't want to be deceived by ourselves, definitely. And we don't just so stinking devil out here deceiving us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Number six, Satan tries to deceive believers and unbelievers into doctrines of devils. He wants, he wants, he wants us to believe doctrines of devils and false religions and cults in the occult by using false crises, false teachers false prophets, gurus. Man, a lot of gurus
who's out there, y'all, using the name of the Lord. A lot of motivation. That's what they do. Use motivation. Motivation is driven by discipline. And I believe you change temporarily. I believe inspiration gives us the obedience to change permanently. The Bible said all scripture was inspired by God. Inspiration, where we get the word inspiration. So that means the word will keep going when all the praises stop going. Because motivation to make you get out of one of them conferences, one of them workshops, and fly out that joker boy, you finna go conquer the world. <laughs> and then your sister died. That's your daughter died. Your son died. You lose the job. What happened? It was motivation. Yeah. Driven by discipline. Good discipline to change temporarily. But inspiration gives us the obedience to change permanently. Amen. And inspiration comes through the word of God. Inspired word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, speaker expressing that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Wow. They're going to depart from the faith. There's people that then jumped over to other religions. A lot, a lot of power, a lot of other, not Israel, Hebrew lights, it's got, it's got the, the Egyptians. Yeah, but look what they're doing. They're speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sheared with a hot iron. You ever had a rayon shirt? 100% rayon. Nobody has to hit, that, hit, hit it on high with that iron. Game over. Game over. <laughs> yeah, you walk around now, you try to tuck it. Because Peter is a lot of little Texas shirt. I didn't mess with a whole bunch of me. I used to wear a lot of gray out of shirt. <laughs> Man, I'm just thinking about myself. I had a gray out of shirt, but down, way down here. I don't know who I was, y'all. Thank God for seeing you. Man, when you, when you, when you, get, when you get your car to shield out of that means you're going to believe it whether you won't believe it or not. When your conscience is sheared with hot iron, you're going to believe it whether you want to believe it or not. Because it's pressed in. And you have believed a lie so long, much so long, that now you believe a lie the truth. I told you, Joe, was trying to tell me out. California, like this past time, but the last time, yeah, I was just trying to talk about how tough he was, man. You remember how tough I was? Ronnie, though. I said, shoot, Ronnie, don't know. You know, you was there, bro. You was definitely there. You was on the team. Yeah, but you wasn't, you wasn't a man like that, man. Tell him, man. Y'all know I did. I said, this man, did see this out. <laughs> told him, man, boy, he used to be spatted up because he used to really look good. He used to put the tape all on his shoes and have the wristbands and had the best fighting shoes. I said, boy, you used to come out there looking good, boy. Yeah, tell him, right? I can't have to look good. I used to do this. I, said, I just listened to him. Hey, Amen. But his conscience is sheared in that area, in that area with a hot iron. Praise God. Amen. So let's look at <clears throat> in Mark chapter 13, verse 5. And Jesus answered them, began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. You don't know as many people. You ever looked at the, at the, at the YouTube and just look up, man say he's Jesus? You'll find 2,000. 2,000 videos, men walking around talking about their Jesus. And should deceive many. Luke chapter 21, verse 8 says, And he said, Take heed that you do not deceive, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. And the time draws near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. Don't follow them. Jim John. Jim John. Y'all remember Jim John? Jim John had a full drink at Purple Kool Aid. Amen. Killed those 500 people, right? They thought that he was a Christ. Or, 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 or someone like a Christ. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 13. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves. Watch this. These people are transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed. So don't get, don't, 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 don't. Don't be so alarmed. 
that these false apostles, deceitful workers, transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, no marvel, for Satan himself transformed himself to an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. See, I learned something about this. People say, man, you think that this dude going, this dude going. I say, the scriptures say where you and me and them going to go if they continue that nonsense. So I ain't going to say what? So you won't get me, even Brother Gaston said, he going to hell whose end shall be according to their work. No, no, the scripture says, therefore, it is no great thing for the minister to be transformed to the minister of righteousness whose end shall be according to their work. Everybody in going to be according to their work. So don't come ask me where God going to put nobody because I'm trusting in God that I can get in. Amen. Come ask me where God put nobody. Yeah. Amen. Because the Bible, the table of that scripture, say whose end should be according to their works. Everybody in going to be according to their works. Yeah? That's how you settle that question when people ask you that. Man, listen, man. Ryan, I don't know, man, but I know that the scripture said that uh, his end going to be according to his works. So let's have a word of prayer for him. Amen. What if we change the city like that? Yeah. What if we start to change the city like that? Man? A lot of folks out there hurt. Yeah, you better we all better hurt. Mother, 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 what's his name? Mother Taylor. Mother Taylor over at New Hope. Somebody stood up and said, you know I've been hurt. The preacher in the pool bit. She said, hey, you better hurt before you got over before you get over again. <laughs> that she was old school. You know, Mother Taylor. Man, Mother Taylor still, still living. That woman walked from her house, Eastport, all the way to my I should pick up this so I get a word. Amen. See, Sister Kelly. We got one more, one more scripture, y'all. Amen. First mm. Corinthians. I mean Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Last scripture. I marvel that you are so removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ to another gospel which is not another but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel look, look, look how strong those words are if you preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have preached unto you let him be a curse as we said before so say I now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you then that ye have received, let him be a curse. So let, that means excommunicated. That word curse means excommunicated from the flock. Excommunicated. Father, we come in Jesus' name.